Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Ears to the East. Um, by the way, I've, I've noticed now that I, I'm going to do this intro a little bit quieter in the future, because I noticed before that I was kind of saying it loudly, and it made the beginning of all of our videos really irritating. <laughs> and... Um, they say audience retention is really about the first few seconds <laughs> therefore um, i decided that my um my distorted voice was probably not the best way so now it's hello and uh, welcome to ears to the east <laughs> now on drive time is it a long overnight drive are you trying oh, to stay awake oh i yes. say dear chap i love how splendid this podcast is going to be today <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyway we're gonna we're gonna jump into a little bit of an interesting subject we i have like an ideas folder and so I got this out of the obscure ideas folder today and I take suggestions. So by the way, if anyone's got a suggestion that they want to put in for something that we could do for an obscure one, because we like we like to do like the on topic ones. But we also like to do the weird ones like this as well. Yeah. So today's subject. Um, well, Hollywood has had a writer's strike, which is rather amusing. And it's had an actor's strike, which is all rather amusing. It's like so there's there's nothing coming out of Hollywood, and which made me think. Considering all the appalling like biopics there have been of bands, like the really bad biopics, like the Bohemian Rhapsody, which plays as a good movie, but is entirely fiction and just has no bearing on reality. What bands from Japan or anywhere in the East, because we've got to keep that net, or bands or artists would we think would make a really good biopic movie? And can we imagine how that movie would look? Like, can we think of a band which would, I mean, to me, you know, I'm I, already thinking the family story. I get the feeling that family would be great because the family story would also include a cameo from you, Neon, because of course you've uh, you uh, you made yourself known to her by uh, releasing a video and then having communication with her about that video. I so know, you you would she, have to it, have it, like I know she she knows who I am. I have to be an extra in that, surely. <laughs> So Brad Pitt as Neon Reaper. <laughs> Can he do a Liverpudlian accent? That's the big question. Uh, and surely, surely it will be like Jason Statham. Surely for the for, for the bald head. <laughs> it's very much a... So yeah, I made the video. What about it? <laughs> I made the video. I'll be right there, mate. Yeah. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, or maybe, or maybe Vin Diesel. Don't worry, family. I'll take the video down. It's all about family. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine like Vin Diesel, like pretending because he's got to do the whole setup. He's got to do a reaction video. <laughs> I can't do the accent. So it sounds like Jason Statham. Like, like, yeah, like yeah, Statham with a cold. Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just stick with uh, uh, just Jason uh, Statham with a cold. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just imagine him. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, that would be the perfect way. Surely that just sounds like me constantly really anyway. Movies. Um, <laughs> if I interview enough artists, I might get my own cameo um, in one of these movies. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, which which artist do we think would make a, a good movie? Now, I'm, obviously, I'm going to have to get the obvious one out of the way. I think we we could have a band-made movie. I think they've had a 10 years I, I, now. Literally, literally, that was what I was going to say. I was like, it has to be a drama with Miku down on a look. The poor girl working at a maid's cafe has to pay the rent. The boyfriend leaves her. It's all drama and don't don't, don't imagine saying she has a boyfriend. Do you know how many fans will kill you for insinuating? Oh, that? Don't, 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 don't don't worry, don't worry. She, like you know, he he leaves her. You know, you know, and then and then she she evolves. She has these dreams where she sees a pigeon flying in in in, in, um, in her dreams and then it inspires her to play the guitar and she creates the she, band known as Bandmade. She looks in a mirror and she sees a pigeon. She just sees the pigeon. Yeah, she that, realizes that, she was a pigeon all along. She goes to have like a, she goes to have one of those, like, was it 23 and me, one of those DNA tests and they go, mm. I don't know, for some reason it all came back avian. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, you're not a human at all. We, we could do, we could do like fight club stuff where like, you don't notice, it's really subtle, but like every time she has like a reflection in the glass, it's just a, it's just a giant pigeon. <laughs> Like, like it's really subtle. They don't emphasize the fact that you watch them. Oh, I you. love that. But that in the, like, so you good. Like, to glasses and windows, it's just like a fake outline of a pigeon. Just, she's just like in a scene and there's just like one frame cuts in of a pigeon like behind <laughs> her and it goes away. 
Oh, that's and, and then, so and then, good. And then at the end, it's like Birdman, where you just see her on top of the roof. And she looks like she's about to commit suicide, and she just she just spreads her wings and flies into the. And then the people watch her fly away. Oh my god, this is so cool! Like Fight Club meets like Birdman, like two of the best films. Like those films were amazing. Yeah. Those films somehow combined to make the Miku story. I also like the idea we can have subtle things like she's walking around. We can have like a um six sense thing where she's walking around and she just keeps on people seeing people throwing like bread, but there's no birds there, and she's like, what? People frying bread, and then she cuts back at the end, and they were frying bread at her. Yeah, like, there's, 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 there's like a flashback at the end where all the people just see her as a pigeon, and then she she doesn't know. <laughs> she was oh a pigeon all along. This is too good. No, we changed our mind. This is what the video is about today. This is this, this is today's new video topic. We're talking about this, the Miku story. The Holy Miku shit. story. Oh <laughs> god. Oh my god. And of course, we've got to have the thing. So we've got to have the so. This is this is the overarching theme. Yeah. Right? The overarching theme is the whole thing that she doesn't know she's a pigeon, but she turns. Yeah, and I got, I, I got, I got an idea. I got an idea. Miku, oh, shit, uh, sorry, sorry, me, Misa, me, sorry, Misa, being the uh, raging alcoholic who's in the bar all the time. Yeah, she's the only one because she's drunk all the time. Is the only one that knows she's a pigeon. Like nobody else can see it, but only, only Misa can see it when she's drunk. Now, I I don't know how. Because obviously, so Miku uh, drafted the other members. I believe she meet, uh, drafted. Uh, so again, this is going to be. I think a lot of people know this now from various things. I mean, like we <laughs> we don't have as good history history knowledge of bands. We love the music, but we tend not to be as detailed on the knowledge of the backstory of the bands. But because we've covered bandmates so much on my channel, like since year dot since we started in 2019, and of course I've been to the gigs and everything, I've kind of vicariously picked up so much information. But still, I'm, there's details that I don't know as well as the diehard yeah, well, well, fans well, who are it. like once, once you get kind of engrossed in a band, you kind of pick it up. But it's not, oh, it's not, it's shit. not like it's Neon. not like it's not like the other night where they just drop scandal on you, and I'm like. <laughs> But ne Neon, 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 oh. that's what makes this such a perfect conversation because we're going to produce this just like a Hollywood studio. We're going to get the details wrong because we don't know it as well as the true diehard fans. I just love the music, but the people who actually know, we're going to get mistakes. So let's keep on writing our script and making mistakes so the fans can get really angry at us and tell us what we should have done all along. Like every YouTube studio, like every um, movie studio, which is actually read the source material. I know, I know. Um, so, anyway. so, 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 Akane, Akane, she doesn't no, have wait. a lemonade stand, she has a banana stand, but she never sells wait. any bananas. So, all you see Hold up. Hold is her eating bananas for the whole entire movie. <laughs> I, I I was like I was thinking that maybe like Miku was on a visit to the zoo, not realizing that you know like um you know she's a pigeon, uh, and then she just sees like Akane in one of the like gorilla exhibits or something. Balls her out with like, a banana. Yeah, sets her free, and everyone's like panicking, but because she's already a, a pigeon, she doesn't realize the hu why the humans are freaking out. She's just like, oh, just, we're animals. Okay. Then it becomes a little bit like, what, what's the, the animated movie where the, the animals escape from the zoo? Oh, oh Madagascar. 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 Yeah. So then it becomes a bit like, so it's like Fight Club meets Madagascar meets Birdman. All right. Meets Sixth Sense. We're on a fucking roll right now. Okay. I know. So, uh, so then they, they escape from the zoo. Um, that, that's the tagline right there. Not, uh, we then they, I see dead people. It's, I see pigeons. <laughs> so, Fuck how oh. they actually met in real life. Then, then they, then they bump into they bump into Misa, who's the only one who can see them. Um, so that's how we get those three together. Um, so at some point, Psyche is train spotting in like really nice trainers. Of course, she's got nice trainers on. I just realised it's a shame that I hope she knows the English word for sneakers is trainers, because then she can be the train spotting girl who likes trainers. She would enjoy that much more. Um, <laughs> and for Americans, if you didn't know that, um, what you call sneakers, we call trainers. Um, but yeah, so somehow we got to get Psyche into this. So Psyche can either be shoe shopping or she's train spotting at the time that she comes across Misa escorting a gorilla and a pigeon. Fair enough. I like that. I like that. I got I got the perfect one for uh, for Kanami as well. All right. How's Kanami joining? Let's bring right, him right. in. Charles. So basically. Outside of uh, outside of Miku's apartment, you see the shot of her all the time, and she's a really really homeless person, but she's been playing this like swinging the string, and she's amazing at it. But every this single time, 
just one, one just like, one string. just one string and she's just being awesome at it but every day Miku walks past her as she's going about her work. So you see her go into the apartment and you see her there. And you see her leave. You also get a shot of her just playing. And then eventually, at one point, she's about to go in as she's looking for the perfect guitarist. And before she goes into her apartment, she stops on the street, looks, and and um, takes her into the apartment, gets it cleaned up. And then that's how we get, gives her the guitar. Okay. The okay. first time she gets the guitar, she just starts shredding. <laughs> Okay, so I got this. I got this. This makes sense now because Psyche joined last because, mm-hmm. you know, Miku originally wanted to do the singing guitar, but she figured she needed Psyche, right? Mm-hmm. So we've now got these four. And, of course, this can be after after they've all gone back to Misa's apartment, I guess. or Yeah, because maybe it can be Misa who was walking past and saw every day because pigeons don't naturally have apartments. So it's got to be Misa who takes the gorilla and the pigeon back to her apartment. Eventually, when the band comes together, that's when they all get their human form, I think. But anyway, so we got this point. Misa's brought them back to her apartment. Um, and probably at this point, Misa's still playing guitar and singing. And, you know, f- f- fuck her senpai. We've taken a senpai out of the story. You know, this is an important thing in inaccurate biographies. We can't have, you know, certain people have to be erased for the sake of convenience, narrative convenience. So her senpai has been cruelly erased from this story. Instead, what happens is that she sees this woman playing the one string and she's like so blown away by her that she kind of thinks, you know, I'd rather play bass because, you know, just like less strings being played better. So that makes her want to do And then she brings in like this woman from the street, Konami, who then starts playing guitar on yeah. her guitar. She takes up bass. Then we've got the four of them. Um, then all we have to do is add Psyche. And I think Psyche has to walk into a maid cafe when the four of them are in a maid cafe. The four of them are in a maid cafe and then Psyche walks in. This can maybe be like Miku's got a job. Maybe Miku's taken on her human form now, got a job in a maid cafe. And that's when... Psyche comes in after a hard day of train spotting. Mm. You know, she's bought these new trainers, but so her legs feel really good, but the rest of her is really tired. She comes in, she sits down. All she wants is some Maya Maya. And then uh, she hears she hears Lil Kumin playing on one of the stages in the maid cafe. And she's like, wow. And then for some reason she gets up and sings along. And then that's the scene where Mika goes, oh, you're the singer I was always looking for. And then bam, we have our origin story. And virtually none of it is yeah. true. Uh, but I know. it's, we, it's we, like we, the we, origin you know story we, you'd expect from someone who only read the, the liner notes. You, and you, <laughs> you, know, you know what we should, we should also have? We need cameos. But obviously, oh, like, yeah. incorrect cameos. Like, we should have it that Miku goes for an audition at the beginning of the movie. Because we've got, we've got to play, play the protagonist as always down on her luck. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to make it, you know, certain at the beginning of the movie that this is the lowest point she, she can be, you know. And she goes for an audition, and the person she's auditioning for is Cobra, and she's competing against the three girls from Baby Metal. And Cobra shoots her down and goes, "I don't want you. I want these girls." And that is how Baby Metal becomes their rival. <laughs> No, it's, it's going to be, it's, he's going to be, so I don't want you, I want these girls. And then when she sees the flashback at the end, what he actually meant is I don't want you because I want these girls, you're a pigeon. You're a pigeon, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, I want you, I want girl, these girls. Oh, and yeah. it was like, oh. And then like you have the flashback of that scene and it was it was actually wasn't three girls. It was actually like two girls and a pigeon. Um, yeah, I like that. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. This is good. Um, also, you've got to have cameos from, which are time inaccurate. So cameos from people who either weren't famous or were maybe dead at the time. Uh, so totally inaccurate things, you know, like I, 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 um, I got I got one for Fuki. Like, like, OK, I, like she she appears through the whole entire. Film, but she's singing for a different band every single time. <laughs> Like every time there's a moment where she, they get together with other bands, Fuki's always there, but she's got a new band every single time. You know I mean? And she, she's got she's got a different hair color, and in fact, she's played by a different actress. Every yeah, time yeah, she's got, a a different, different she's got a different she's got a different hair and a different band every single time. And it's time. it's a different actress. <laughs> it's not even the same actress every time. They just get a different actress to play her in each scene. Yes, there there you, there you go. Be... <laughs> I love that so much. Like, wait, are you? It's me, Fuki. We met before. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, oh, and then there's one scene she turns up and she's beat Takeshi in a wig. Um, and 
<laughs> she's an aging guy. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> How do you keep well, on looking see, different? See, see, this is when we got we got to put in the Easter eggs and stuff <laughs> now as well. This is what we're on about. So we got we got to try and get Ban Mako in there somehow. So that could be like their first gig when they try when Miku tries to get them gigs and they can't get any gigs at any proper venues. They they have to set up with this gig as um girls dressed in caminos at like a wedding or oh, something. I, 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 I've I've got a great idea. I've got a great idea. Turns out because Miku's eight hundred and ten years old. Band Maiko is actually her grandmother's band who she based band made on. And then like one day something something bad happens, like they get like get trapped in yeah. like uh they get imprisoned in a country whilst on tour and they can't turn up to a tour date. So they call up grandmother and they go, Gran, quick, it's nearly time for our tour. Can you dress up like us and can you do our show for us? And then yeah. they turn up and they become band Maiko. There you, there you go. We can have flashbacks to the grandma as well. She and they'll be like, Miku, one day you will spread your wings and fulfill oh, your yeah. destiny. Obviously, Miku doesn't know what that means at the time, and then she realizes at the end of the film that she can spread her wings and becomes the hawk pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've got to have that Birdman Phoenix Rises kind yeah. of like scene at the end where everyone watches her. But it all, it all, it all makes oh, dude, sense. He's frozen. Yeah, no, I'm still, I'm still here. Yeah, we can, we can have, we can have that there, and freaking like just have like her grandma in her head. You will be great, pigeon. Fly, spread your wings, fly, Miku. Fly. Yeah, the music, the music rises. The music and she swells up. Flashbacks. Yeah, but now the flashbacks are two pigeons just sitting on top of like a little trash can or something. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I love this. I love this. This is this is so good. Um, and again, what I really love about this is not only is this really awesome, but it has all the accuracy that you expect from a Hollywood um, uh, biography oh movie. A and legit this, Hollywood production, I know, right? I will add to this as well, that considering all the writers are on strike, I'm just going to put it forward. I, I'm, I am only mildly more expensive than using chat GPT, <laughs> so Hollywood. Give us a call. We'll, we'll call call, you a call us. We 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 have yeah. so many more ideas. So um, believe believe me, if we can if we can pitch this, we can we can fix Star Wars. Trust us for like half nah, the that's, price. That's too far gone, bro. That's ah, too far gone. Maybe maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So just just tell them we can fix Star Wars, take the check because they'll clearly pay for any old shit, and then we'll run off. Uh, <laughs> it can't it can't be any worse than the Last Jedi, so we're all good. <laughs> How's that hotel looking, guys? How's that hotel looking? Anyway, <laughs> man, I, I I'm not being funny, but considering that um, Hollywood have spent uh, a lot of their time ripping off old traditional stories, you know, old German fairy tales, old English stories, Winnie the Pooh. There's a whole generation who don't know Winnie the Pooh is actually an English story, or in fact, he rose to be have Chinese. You, have, you, have, you seen, have you seen the um, the Blood and Honey Winnie the Pooh horror film? Yeah, it, like I, Winnie, I, I, Win, I Winnie the Pooh went into public domain recently, and I tell you what, some yeah. of the crap that has come out is beyond atrocious. <laughs> you know, I actually, I, mean, I actually think there's quite a lot of um, franchises and, and IPs now which are getting there in age, coming, which yeah. it could be in the public domain soon. Well, there are a lot of old songs as well, which might be from a very old era, but actually quite well written. And I was thinking mm -hmm. I might actually myself take a bit of time, like updating some really old songs from like the 30s and stuff that are actually really good, you know. Yeah. Um, but 1930s. Uh, but yeah, so there's um there's like there's like loads of stuff like that. But yeah, the blood and hurry honey thing, I think it was basically exactly what you'd expect in that, you know, it was a funny premise. But then the execution was so shit, apparently, that everyone was... It's one of those things where watch the trailer, the that's all the entertainment you need. Once you watch the trailer, you don't need to watch the movie. It's like, you got the joke. Um, but yeah, so I, I think Ban made the movie. Um, and remember, for any any fans like myself out there, actually like both of us, but um, for any fans like myself out there, I would say, um, no, an accurate band made film is completely and utterly unacceptable. Movies cannot be accurate. They have to be absolutely, um, they have to contain a certain degree of heresy. Therefore, I put forward our band made movie <laughs> as the best possible idea for a band made movie. Please tell us what you would change about that. What you would, um, what, what you would, would you like add to, to it? <laughs> what would you add to it? Um, are there any plot holes that we can make bigger? 
Um, are, <laughs> are, there, are there any other artists or bands who you want to... Actually, I'll tell you what, this could be a good idea for a, a, a future thing. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, tell us yeah. what, maybe tell us what bands you would like us to do minimal research on and write a script for. And when I say minimal research, I mean we will take about five minutes reading the Wikipedia. We might go on like a couple of fan sites and we re we're going to skim read the shit out of everything. We're not going to pay mm. any proper attention. So tell us, what bands would you like us to disrespect? <laughs> We can we 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 can do we can do like baby metal next like the the sun. Oh, I like that. The, the the sun starts rising and all you see is one girl you eat it in a, in a in a field picking tomatoes. <laughs> I think we're supposed to say tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomato. Tomato. You say tomato, I say tomato. That's tomato, nearly tomato. public domain as well. Let's call the whole thing <laughs> off. Um, so yeah, I th I think uh, it should be by now. Uh, but yes, you and I, um, you and I can have fun with that. I think baby metal will probably be a very contentious one. Let's uh, <laughs> let's maybe see that one's coming next. All right, we're gonna. I think we'll call this one quits for now because uh, I can't wait to see what comments come up on this. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, until we uh, hopefully see you very soon in Japan for your comments and what other craziness might come <laughs> next. For now, keep your Here ears is. to the east. <laughs>